Hello students, welcome to EPG Part Shala. I am Professor Ipshita Bansal from BPSV University, Sonipat. Today, we are going to talk on the module Science, Space and Time Language from the paper Business Communication. By the end of this module, students will be able to understand the language of science, space and time know how time plays a vital role in personal and professional life and lastly we'll learn the different uses of sign and space and the message they convey space or proxemics is the study of the way we communicate in particular environment around us people also communicate with others by means of time and the importance we give to the time by sending signals or cues regarding it. For decades, men have been using signs and symbols which are understood amongst themselves and by all the other related individuals. Signs can be not only visual but also audio. Smell, touch and taste also are the signals which communicate with sensory perceptions. The most powerful and effective sign is visual. As it is said that a picture is worth a thousand words because we take much of our information through gateway of our eyes. What is the language of space? Use of space reflects how close we are to people and during the interaction do we face towards them or away from them. This depends on our relationship with others. Space is the distance which people maintain between themselves and others at home, society and workplace. Humans are highly territorial and it can be seen that people always make boundaries which surrounds them because they feel uncomfortable if somebody is standing too close to them as they never wish that their space should be invaded by others. This is the reason people seek to make the territories and want to protect them. And these relationships and boundaries are directly influenced by our daily encounters. The personal space is also called as bubble. This is the area surrounding the individual or the space between two people while they interact. This boundary is invisible but is realized when someone tries to cross it by hitting the bubble. The personal area of each person is defined or decided by the individual as per their level of comfort with different people. As we can see in the picture that the individual is happy talking to another person as long as appropriate distance is maintained between the two. That is, the bubble is intact. The moment another individual breaks the bubble and comes closer, the person becomes not okay and becomes uncomfortable which is depicted by his drooping mouth. So, let's understand the concept of proxemics. The concept of proxemics has developed over a period of many years of research. It defines area around people and the adequate social behavior in those zones. There are different types of space we maintain with people in our home and office. It is notable that if the degree of intimacy increases, the distance between the two people decreases. Personal space or a distance from the other person is a powerful concept. Research suggests that space is directly related not only to the relationships with other persons, but also with the interpretation or meaning of the messages conveyed by others. For instance, a person expressing anger from far away is supposed to be less threatening. But if the person is close, 
the expression of anger becomes more threatening. It is important to maintain the adequate distance from others to send the right signals. For example, while standing in a queue and if not maintaining the proper distance, people will mark you as pushy. Or while standing in a group, no matter how close the group members are to each other, if you move closer to someone in that group and they back away, that means you are entering into their personal space or comfort zone and thus you should step back. But there are some situations when we have to get close to the other person to communicate. For example, sharing a secret from a distance of 10 feet is not only difficult but is next to impossible and it will wipe out the confidentiality of the message and therefore we need to stand close to share secret messages. So what is the history of proxemics? The term proxemics was coined in 1963 by the researcher E.T. Hall. The informal space is characterized by a personal zone that changes according to individuals and situations. Interacting with people can promote the act of communication and wider the area that humans control, known as informal space. At the same time, this zone represents the area which is protected by individuals from the interruption of outsiders. The space surrounding us and its contents convey a specific meaning. We can say that the distance between us and the other people tells us something important about our relations and the nature of communication with them. The diagram shows the circles of personal space. In the center is intimate space. Next comes the personal space. Third is the social space and beyond that is the public space. So let's understand these four zones of space in detail. Intimate zone is for embracing. It refers to the space from zero to one and a half feet where people are able to touch each other easily. In most times, the body movements begin within the area of 18 inches around the person. That is why close body language is used within this particular area. Mainly, only our family members, friends and selected people enter this area. Those selected people are definitely special people with a special relationship. The conversation between these people has the exceptional significance. The language which is used within this small intimate group or circle may not possess many words. Feelings play a crucial role over here. The body language like facial expressions, eye contact, handshake, pat on the back or shoulder are noticeable. Even sometimes whispers take the place of loudly spoken words. In a nutshell, this is the real non-verbal proximity. Proximity is a language of space which means nearness. The nearer we are to the persons with whom we want to communicate, the more intimate the relationship of communication will be. The second zone is personal zone for conversations among closed friends. It extends from one and a half to four feet and here people are easily able to shake hands as the distance is no more than the arm's length. As an intimate space, we mostly converse in soft voice or at a low pitch. Personal space that expands beyond 18 inches to 4 feet, we have normal conversation with close ones. They may be friends, colleagues, acquaintances and visitors. Communication in this circle is also chiefly personal in nature. 
it is comfortable and informal for most of the people are familiar to each other. This group or circle allows unplanned talks and impulsive discussions. On the other hand, some imperative decisions may also be taken in this circle. Social zone. Social zone is for communicating with known people. Social zone runs from 4 to 10 feet. It is mostly used in day-to-day -day social and business activities and thus been called the social space. People use this space mostly for formal purposes and the associations or the interactions within the circle are mainly official. They do most of the business within this area. While emotions, feelings, shared likes and dislikes may come up in the intimate and personal space, more rationale and planning are used in the social space. Therefore, this social space is significant for business purposes. Fourth zone is the public zone used for public speaking. This extends beyond 10 feet. It is a situation where people do not know each other and so there are very less chances of close interaction. It is generally used in public speaking. In this huge area, communication becomes more formal. The feelings and friendliness of intimate and personal space is replaced by the detachment and neutrality and formal approach of conversations. Those communicating in the zone of public space have to raise their voice so that it can be clearly heard by everyone. Clearly depicts in pictorial manner the concept of the four zones. Red denotes intimate space, yellow personal space, green social space and blue public space. Let's now talk about preset and semi-fixed spaces. Two different kinds of spaces that is proximics, space fixed and semi-fixed have important implications for communication. Space fixed. Fixed space is regarded consisting of permanent features like walls, room size, the building, its total area, corners and counter for special motives and so on. These staple descriptions communicates the message about the interrelationships of features, clearing up that who interrelates with whom, how, for how long and for what purpose. Semi-fixed spaces. When the physical features are to some point changeable or likely to be rearranged, this type of space is known as semi-fixed space. This change in arrangements allow a variety of spaces that can be used to perform different types of communication activities. For example, the same furniture, heavy or not so heavy, can be arranged, rearranged for an interview, a group discussion or for an oral presentation. Layout and design. Space also talks about layout and design as a part of non-verbal communication. Space arrangement of an office, carpeting or its absence, the furniture and its design, everything conveys meaning. Every person is amazed by attractively furnished place of work, the layout of a lobby, of a conference room or a reception desk. Everything matters. It is due to this motive that so much attention is being paid to structural design and furnishing, especially of organizations and service industries 
that is hotels, restaurants, etc. Layout designing, furnishing is in itself an important area of communication. All this is aimed at conveying the vision of the organization. At the back of all this is the vision of the successful communicators. Let's now understand the use of space in organizations. In organizations, most people use space and distance to communicate important information about themselves. The proximity or distance they keep in relation to others in the various situations in which they find themselves during the course of a business day results from their perception of their territories. For example, two employees who are familiar to each other will be careful not to encroach on each other's personal space at the lunch hour. Also, they will keep a greater distance from their boss in comparison to other persons who share their office. By becoming aware of the non-verbal cues of distance, one can learn much about the people they come in contact with. The impact of the use of space on communication process is related directly to the environment in which the space is maintained. There are three basic principles that summarize the use of space in an organization. The higher your position or status in the organization, the more and better space you will have. The better protected your territory and space will be and the easier it will be to invade the territory or space of people lower in status than yourself. Let's now understand the use of space by groups. The manner in which the group of people use the space which is assigned to them determines their power or functions in the organization. For instance, people who initiate in conversations and those seated at the front are usually considered leaders of the group. Or if the people are seated around a round table, it depicts that the conversation is going on for some conference. Let's now understand the language of signs. Signs includes two ways of representing the message. That is visual signs and audio signs. They are further explained in detail. Let's now take up visual signs. Emphasizing the importance of signs, symbols and other visual elements in communication, Lessiker and Pettit stated that as we know from the study of communication theory, words are imprecise conveyors of meaning. At best, words fit reality only loosely. Thus, it is little wonder that we frequently have difficulty in communicating through words only. You will need to use pictures of some kind to help communicate your information effectively. Now let's talk about pictures as visual signs. Pictures as signs communicate a lot. For example, the paintings or the engravings found on the walls of ancient caves, temples and other structures tell us a lot about the lifestyle of those people. The tradition of drawing pictures for the purpose of communication still continues. Posters and pictures of all kinds, real life drawings as well as caricatures etc. are used for business and also for raising awareness about various issues. For instance, danger signal is displayed with a picture of two crossed bones under a skull. 
no smoking signal signal depicts a cross over a cigarette as a warning against smoking the books of various subjects like geography science economics and history are incomplete without maps and diagrams as they are essential part of a book in the same way the pamphlet of tourism and hotel industry or oil refinery or motor company is not complete without colorful photographs pictorially representing the importance of these places some signs speak universal language as shown in the picture for example traffic safety sign telephone booth icon no smoking sign cross safely sign such are the signs which are recognizable to the people all over the country and not only that but all over the world let's now talk about colors as visual signs colors are also an important part of visual signs different colors communicate different messages as various colors are associated with diverse backgrounds cultures and meaning people make serious efforts to choose the right color for any significant event in the same way the different colored lights of green or red at traffic points railway stations and airports a neon hoarding a revolving light on top of a vip vehicle or an ambulance a red bulb outside the operation theater of a hospital serve their purposes very effectively without using words colors of flags whether white or black and the colors of flowers in a vase or bouquet speak volumes about the feelings of the communicator the language of colors as a part of non verbal communication is very much used in the retail industry for the purpose of visual merchandising where the window display is done to attract the passer by in the stores the color combination is made that way which symbolizes more than the words for successful communication it is important to have the right choice of color of our clothing home office interiors etc let's now talk about audio and sound signals since the beginning of civilization till today's world of large business houses audio and sound signals have always been in use drum beats are very common in ancient times and are still popular in modern world as an essential part of many communities and culture and are used for celebrations alarms are used for caution for example fire alarms accident or casualty alarms air raid or assault alarms vip motorcade alarms machine breakdown alarm and so on another use of alarm is to make us aware of time and our schedules no office is complete without a buzzer or a bell as they put the concerned people on alert advantages of visual and audio sound signals visual signals like pictures posters photographs etc helps to convey more in less it is easy to communicate in visual terms instead of words colorful pictures canvases etc make communication appealing and arouse the curiosity in the mind of receiver for the message the visual and audio signals also manifest the reasoning skills intelligence level and enriched background of the communicator visual and audio signals facilitate communication with illiterate people also 
visual signs help in giving effective instructions of various operations of machines, adopting safety measures, maintenance work, cleaning, etc. at the workplace. Posters, pictures, photographs, graphics, etc. makes advertisement interesting and leave an impact on the viewer. Sound signals are quick ways to communicate the message. Like the hooting of siren makes workers active, change in shift work, winding up the day's work or taking safety measures. Use of bells streamline the working of the workplace by regulating visiting hours, calling someone, waiting time to visitors, etc. Let's now discuss the language of time. It refers to the use of time which is also known as chronomics. It conveys messages related to time like the amount of time spent with friends, colleagues and other persons. Punctuality and waiting time. It is the another means of non-verbal communication. Usage of time conveys many silent messages. Who comes first and who leaves first communicates a lot. Normally, the students, the subordinates and the audience come first and the speaker, a teacher or a boss and guests arrive later. On the other hand, during a meeting, the chief or the boss or the guest and the head takes his or her seat first followed by others. This use of time of taking the seat first or entering the conversation room first conveys the message about the position of a person. Looking at one's watch is another aspect of time related communication. The listener looks at the watch frequently to send the message to the speaker that they are exceeding the allotted time. Another situation can be that if the employee arrives late, the superior shows displeasure by looking at the watch. Reaching office on time or before time not only communicates your punctuality but also sincerity and dedication towards work. In today's modern day organizations, time management plays a vital role in achieving success. The goals of business organizations are communicated in terms of deadlines and time schedules. Therefore, time management is crucial in the success of an organization. Some aspects of management of time that communicate sincerity and commitment are the following. Whether the person arrives at time for an appointment or not. Whether a person who has arrived on time for an appointment is required to wait or not. Whether the conference or a meeting starts on time or not. Whether the speaker winds up his or her speech in time or exceeds the time limit. Leading institutions and organizations make certain that the value of time is appreciated. The organizations that do not understand the worth of time demonstrate the poor work culture. So, what is the importance of time for organizations? Business organizations or communities involved in business all over the no world knows the worth of time and it is very rightly said that time is money. It is this realization of the worth of time or the significance of time and its crucial role in manufacturing and production which has led to the invention of many time saving devices. In fact, passes through our thoughts and dominates our communication. All communication is meant to be suitably timed. Let us now summarize 
what we have learned in this module. Space, time and sign language. All these three factors are very important parts of non-verbal communication. Availability of time and space with the right usage of signs is crucial aspects of non-verbal communication. The wider is the space for the conversation, the louder is the volume of the speaker. On the other hand, the narrower the space, lower the pitch will be required and also the body language will also be more noticeable. Layout design and color send out messages loud and clear in a somewhat subtle fashion. It requires careful observation, considerable experience and intelligence to understand the color, layout and design languages. For this purpose, it is very important to keep in touch with the latest trends in designs, layouts and color combinations. In the same way, time language or the importance given to time by the communicator makes non-verbal communication meaningful. This conveys a lot about the person who is arriving for meetings or for any other meet, business meet on time. In this regard, one has to carefully observe the time management for being punctual in his or her work and be successful in life. Thank you.